You like cheap comic books, right? Well, I'm Professor Allen, and I talk about cheap comic books on the Quarterbin Podcast. In every episode, I'll dissect a single comic from my collection, as long as I paid no more than 25 cents for the issue. Forget about $4 new comics that you can read in four minutes, or crossover events that can cost 100 bucks to collect. Join me in the quarter bin, where even bad comics are a bargain, and good ones are a steal. The Quarter Bin Podcast is part of the Relatively Geeky Podcast Network. Visit us at relativelygeekypodcast.blogspot.com or search Relatively Geeky or Quarter Bin Podcast in iTunes. I guarantee it'll be worth every penny. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 895 for comics originally releasing on, what do we got, March the 26th and March the 27th. But before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shops this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, Drew, what else we got in the world of comics? I'm pretty disappointed. I didn't, I didn't, still haven't finished Loki. I still got an episode or two of Loki. Mm. It's, I haven't started Echo. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm I, I'm going to do X Men '97, but I'm just yeah. waiting to be in the right mood. I haven't watched Aquaman, the new Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just I, I'm like, what's wrong? What, 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 what those are? I, is there just too much? Is there just too much? And I'm I, I'm not as like got to watch it when it comes out mode anymore. Oh, yeah, I think I mean it. it Post end game, it's just like, eh, yeah. we'll catch it yeah. eventually. It yeah, doesn't we'll feel like necessarily it. building to giant things, but who, I mean, I don't think we're the only people with that issue. Yeah, I, and I'm, I, I think uh, Aquaman was good. I think it was good. <laughs> and it's been what three months? I still haven't watched it. Come on, mm-hmm. that's not me. I gotta do that. What else? Oh, what else I was gonna do? I was gonna do the Daredevil. Yeah. When it because I never finished it over at Netflix, and now that it's moved over, I was gonna I was gonna finish it up. But then I was like, oh, then I have to do Iron Fist, and then I'll have to do Defenders. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I, I heard really bad things about the Iron Fist. Like it was a boring I slog. I liked Iron Fist. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. I definitely well, I liked seen it. the beginning of it and stuff. Okay. I thought it was quite good. Okay. Well, maybe it was just some internet nerd that didn't like it. Again, I, I, I a lot of times like things that people don't like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like your anime cartoons. Don't you start. Don't you start. <laughs> like your, and your little Star Wars cartoons. <laughs> Peak Star Wars. Season Peak. 7 of Clone Wars. Is it? Yeah. Star Wars. Well, that's saying something. Yeah. Hey, and Kyle, don't jump to the catalog. Cause I know you have a sense of doing that. Oh yeah, it's Lately. me who doesn't it, know the order uh, of operation. You so I think what I think we should do is start with CBI's Hot Ten. CBSI? What did I say? CBI. CBI. <laughs> Crime Bureau Investigation. <laughs> <This is> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. All was, right, Drew. I'm gonna go over to our good friends at ComicBookInvest.com, CBSI, if you will, and look at their Hot Ten list for March 22nd. And if I start at number one on the hot 10 list, we have Uncanny X-Men number 200 with our boys, Chris Claremont and John Romita. So how did this end up being number one this week? I'd say it's thanks to X-Men 97 and those fantastic opening two episodes. Episode two covered this very issue in part, and Magneto is wearing this big N outfit in the series. I think it's M, not N. It renewed interest in his book that was only a few bucks to start fetching 15 to 20 now. With over 60 sales, and even a CGC 9.8 bouncing back to $160. When you get six CGC 9.8s for as little as $60 at the end of February. They did mean Big M, right? I think so. I think they did. <laughs> okay. We were like, what am I Clearly missing? Am. At rank two, we have Uncanny X-Men 221. Chris Claremont writing this and Mark Silvestri on the cover art. Even though X-Men 97 is here, Mr. Sinister has not yet appeared on the show, though comic readers know that's coming 
as the seeds have already been planted with the cliffhanger ending to episode two. But this show may not be the only reason folks are looking at his first appearance again. He is rumored for live action as the Big Bad Stale, and he's played a major role throughout his cr- the Krakoa saga of X-Men the last few years, cementing himself as one of their biggest foes alongside Apocalypse and Magneto. Did you say um, X-Men 97 was on Disney Plus? I think so. Okay. Yep. At rank three, Nova, number one, my boy Marv Wolfman writing that. Despite the the talk of the MCU cutbacks on new shows coming to Disney+, Plus, rumors started swirling again this past week that a Nova series is still in the works, causing a stir of this first appearance once again. I personally hope the rumors are, rumors are true, as it was more cosmic storylines in the MCU, and Nova would be a great bridge to those. But we'll see as we have been here before. Rumors come and rumors go. But for now, we're crossing our fingers that this one will come to pass. At four, Star Wars Visions, the Takashi Okazaki, number one, the one in 100 variant, Drew. Everyone's favorite storyline from Star Wars Visions returns with another one shot by the master Takashi Okazaki. We love this cover, but... We're fine with the cover A version as well. It also looks good. But the version 100 incentive has its fans, as there have only been a few copies sold this week, but they have averaged $150, even hitting as high as $190. Not a lot available, but the asking prices are even bigger now on this one. How much would you have to make a year to where you would, like, commonly buy one in 100s to flip i mean <laughs> i am unfamiliar with that amount of money <laughs> we'll just say it I, I, that just, way like that investment in a one in 100 is it's usually well well over a hundred dollars yeah um and the fact that it's coming back in you know n- not huge returns yeah and there's so many of them and they all look good to great mm-hmm. but i couldn't I couldn't pull the trigger. And the fact that now one in 100s are just virgin copies of standard cover. So it's not like you're getting anything necessarily special drawn. Yeah, it's true. That's true. I I just, I I can't fly in that, that close to the sun. Yeah. I just can't do it. I'm with you at rank five, strange adventures, two Oh five, the auto binder written book. My, 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 look at what James Gunn can do with an Instagram post and no context. A simple picture of dead man gets posted and people rush out and get this classic first appearance. Yeah. Granted, volumes will never be like they are with a new release, but over a dozen sales over a couple days is downright bonkers on this kind of book. It's already a pretty pricey book, but that hasn't stopped collectors from shelling out an all-time high of three grand for a CGC 9.0 this week. Who knows if anything will come from the IG post, but Gunn is making comics fun again. At rank six, Web of Spider-Man, number one, the one in 25. This one took us by a lot of surprise this week, as it's basically just a Spider-Man preview book. $8 cover price on the regular editions gets you a couple-page sneak peek at upcoming storylines. In all of the Spider-Man character books from ASM to Spider-Woman to Chasm to Kane Scarlet Spider. The one That's what this is? Yeah. <laughs> the 1 in 25 is the highest ratio, as they didn't shoot for the Virgin 1 in 100 on this one, but still over 20 sales this week, averaging 35 to $40, and even hitting as high as 60 Good old web of. Hmm. At rank 7, Thrawn Alliance is number 3, the 1 in 25 Declan Shalvey variant. Really do like this cover, but folks are still flocking to these Thrawn incentive variants. Are people looking back at those 1 in 25s on the first Marvel Thrawn series and getting a bit of FOMO, perhaps? Maybe, but if you recall, Declan Shalvey had a 1 in 25 on Thrawn 2. That is possibly the least desired variant from the six-issue run. We'll see what happens, but this, but with this one, sales average $45 this week and hitting as high as 60 One might conclude that this is part of the ugly cover phenomenon of 2024. Remember that Cassidy X-Force book? Yeah. I don't think this is anywhere nearly that bad. Yeah, I don't think so either. 
At Ray K, Uncanny X Men 168, another Chris Claremont book. Claremont comes through with a third X Men book on this list this week, with the first appearance of Ma- uh, Madeline Pryor, and a character that not only could be a big part of future X Men 97 episodes, but she's also the Goblin Queen and has crossed over into the Spidey verse. Whatever the case, this jumped up from a $3 book to $30. With a couple dozen sales, even a CGC 9.8 hitting $240, where they were about 185 bucks a week ago. And every 80s comic is going to end up on this list at some point. <laughs> Pull out your bulks. Yeah. At rank nine, I Heart Skull Crushers, number one, the Josie Campbell written book, back on the list this week because the price has actually risen from 10 to $20 average to 20 to 30 with a high hitting $36 on an auction. This was a fun read, so it'll be interesting to see how this holds up. But for now, its cover seems to be the favorite, despite this boom title, having 1 in 10s and 1 in 20 variants. And at rank 10, Star Wars High Republic Adventures, number 4, continuing to sell this week at an average of 10 to $15. Cover A is still the big mover, as it is the bulk of the 100-plus sales of this book we've had in the last seven days. However, the cover B is only around cover price last week and has moved up with the tide to match cover A's price. However, looking at the listings, this is not an easy one to find. Time will tell if cover B can surpass cover A, but folks seemingly are genuinely interested in Star Wars again, which is always exciting. This is the nefarious, nefarious Niv Drendal. That's a new character, I'm guessing. So a lot of these are new characters that have had first appearances otherwhere. So oh. you got to be careful because a lot of them have just kind of appeared in other things, too, that people were saying. So uh, I got you. You must watch. You must be careful what we think are first appearances and what are not first appearances. And some notable sales. Something is Killing the Children, number six, a one in 25 book from our boy James Tinian, also doing the cover, James Tinian. We considered holding this one for the variant heat check this week, but decided the $1,700 sale this week was notable enough. That is not near the all-time high of $2,750 from back during the pandemic, but this is well above the seesaw price in the past two years. The last sale in a 9.8 was for $900 in January, and that is where it has been bouncing around between $900 and $1,200 for the past 24 months or so. So this surge sale is worth noting, as it was a $1,700 accepted best offer on a $1,749 asking. Yeah, now, 1 in 25s, I think I could, I can see myself dabbling in 1 in 25s. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, look at this payoff. You you invested whatever thirty bucks forty bucks thirty bucks and then and fifty to send it off and it's twenty seven fifty dang <laughs> Sun Girl number one by Stan Lee and Ken Bald an all time high sale for a CGC six point five this week for three grand and this timely Stan Lee book there is a whole run of these Sun Girl books that sold this week at an auction it's good to see interest in the classic Golden Age books. Yeah, that's that's a neat one. I've never heard of it. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's kind of cool. Very very old, cool. old Marvel. All right, Drew. Now let's head over to Image and check out our June Image catalog. One hundred and thirty-two pages of Image. Just uh, slog. And my favorites: Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips on the cover. There you go. But we're starting out with Destro, number one of five. The next chapter of the Cobra threat begins here. This is, of course, the Energon universe. Uh, Dan Waters writing this as we're into, you know, the G.I. Joes and Cobras of it all. Okay. Um, I vaguely remember this character. <laughs> this was uh, this was part of the cartoon, right? Yeah, he's kind of essentially the, the weapons dealer. Oh, uh, okay. So we shall see. Could be very interesting. It's a five issue series, forty pages, five bucks pop. I think I'll stay on the Transformer side of the Energon. I'm universe. sorry, did you see who's doing the cover B? No. Joel Jones. You sure you're staying away? I am. I'm st- still staying. Where did you see that? Uh, page the, the the next page. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't care. Yep, get some internal art. It does look kind of interesting. Gotta love the internal art. Quite a few dialogue pages as well. Yeah. Oh, and we're right into a trade for Dandelion from Sabir 
Perzada. What? Yeah. The second book in our Marvel trade. Writer of or, Moon Knight. Yeah, I guess. Oh, writer of the of the show. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, anthology science fiction. So, if you want to shell out seventeen bucks, here you go. Art by Mark Martin Marazzo. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like him. Ice cream man, right there. Here we go. All right, now back to floppy comics again. Falling in love on the path to hell, number one. Jerry Duggan and Gary Brown. 40-page action adventure, historical fiction, and romance. Okay. The sun has set on samurai and gunslingers at roughly the same time. But two, but our two leads didn't die off quietly. In the east, Asami, an Onamusa warrior and female samurai, would rather die with her weapon than surrender them to a sword hunt. In the west, the gunslinger McCrane follows his revenge to the bitter end and pays the ultimate price. Uh, nah. Nah. I mean, the the cover B, yeah. I mean, samurai and western. I don't like yeah. that. I don't want. I don't want those genres mixed. Don't want the your peanut butter and the chocolate. Nah, I don't think so. I mean, the, I the pages I, are good. See, for that metaphor to work, I would have to like both samurai comics and western comics, and I only yeah. like western comics. We so go. that would be like, don't put your broccoli in my chocolate. Ah, gotcha. I'm yeah. with you. All right, then let's head move, head on down to find your boy Ed Brubaker yeah. with House of the Unholy Hardcover. How do these guys crank out complete trades? Like it feels like every three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just putting these bad, bad boys out, and I'll take it. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm going to love it. I don't even I don't need to know what the synopsis says. It's Ed Brubaker. It's it's Sean Phillips. Give me it's give me, crime give me. and mystery. It's horror. Yeah. There you go. This will be a book that releases in August, and this is an advance solicit. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not every three months. Yeah. Well, they've got most of it done because they're already giving us ten pages. Yeah. Misery, number one, from Todd McFarlane and Simon Simon Kadransky. I keep wanting to say Simone, but it's Simon Kadransky. Okay. This is a miniseries horror superheroes and action adventure. Part of the Spawniverse. Is it? Yeah, this is the wife of Al Simmons. Oh, Cyan Fitzgerald is just a woman, a young woman trying to find her place in the world. As the daughter of Wanda Fitzgerald, the former wife of Al Simmons, Spawn. She has been endowed with incredible abilities, abilities that keep her cut off from those around her. Her journey into the darkness starts here. Again, 24 pages, three ninety nine. Todd McFarlane doesn't cost you much to get into it, and it's only four issues. Daughter, I'm sorry, daughter of the wife of Al Simmons. So it's not Al Simmons' daughter then, I guess? Yeah, I'm not specifically told that. Yeah. I know it's, it's the daughter of the wife. <laughs> I just, that's, that's weird the way it was worded. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Spawn people will know. They'll let us know. <laughs> Plastic, Death and Dolls, number one. Everyone's favorite serial killer has returned with a five-issue miniseries from our boy Doug Wagner. Yeah, the first one was pretty good. Creepy, but good. There you go. We get some pages here. Ooh, I like this art. Yeah, it's good. It um, reminds me a little bit of Nailbiter. Mm-hmm. Precious Metal, number one of a six-issue series from Darcy Van Holgeest. 35 uh-huh. years before the events of Little Bird. Yeah, we didn't like Little Bird, did we? Prequel to Little, Little Bird, yeah. Pass. There's a bunch of pages in this, but man, we're getting a lot of preview pages as well. So. Yeah, that's now I realize why it's 132 pages. So they can yeah. give you 10 pages of every single book. It seems like it, which I mean, it's free comics. Can't be nice. Remote space number one, story, art, cover, and everything by Cliff Rathburn. A dystopian science fiction about the year 2450. 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. And Cliff Rathburn doing it all. Mm-hmm. We get any? We, yeah, we get some pages here too. Yeah. Well, hmm. Continuing, we have Rifters number one from Brian Posehn and Joe Troman with a Chris Johnson art. Have you read any of the Brian Posehn stuff? Is he any good as a writer? Um, I'm trying to think of what he wrote that I that I read i think there was one and i liked it it yeah. was a long time ago but it, like when he and jerry duggan were doing whatever they were doing teaming up for mm-hmm. um i didn't read that gotcha i like the art it's good huh? yeah interesting Scarlet number one, back to the Energon universe, black, back to one of our favorite female Joes. So the next chapter of the cool Ooh, name GI Joe begins shoot. here. That's Kelly Thompson too. Kelly Thompson from back Black Widow and Birds of Prey. Well, maybe Prey I will is. dip my toe back into the yeah, side. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Forty issues, five dollars. Action adventure media tie-in. Some really mm. good covers here. A lot of spoiler covers. They're not going to give us again another Joel Jones in cover B, which I like. I'm surprised um, that we're getting like all these heavy hitters coming into mm-hmm. the Energon, yeah, you to take on these properties. I, I I wouldn't have thought that, but I wonder if um. Kirkman's like sweet in the pot. I was going to say like, Berkman. Kirkman probably has more pull than we think. Maybe it's it's probably not the same like image contract where you're a creator you don't you you're not a creator owner because he owns the license so he's mm-hmm. your work for hire and he's saying maybe come, he pays well <laughs> yeah he probably pays well and says come and do this this character yeah that's got to be what it is because otherwise these guys aren't these guys aren't going to take the risk on random GI Joe characters. Yeah, I wouldn't think. Who knows? So great, hope number one. Great, great pages though. That's what I exactly what I was going through. I was like, this looks very interesting. I like it. So hope number one from Owen King and Jesse Kellerman with uh, Maziari Ignazi on art and cover. This is an action adventure crime and mystery. Great yeah, I don't know. This looks really good. And the art looks really good. And yeah, I'm getting this one. Yeah, it does look good. It's very well done. Black Cloak number seven. It continue, It starts its second story arc. Kelly Thompson writing that as well. I've forgotten what this is about. It is a crime and mystery fantasy science fiction. Yeah. Department of Truth. I still have regrets about just reading the first issue of department of truth and not sticking with it. Mm-hmm. I've heard so many good things and look, Eisner even liked it. Yeah. So, and it's a boy, James Tinian. Yeah. Starting, which I should have known. Another arc. Yeah. So this is the fifth arc. Starting. Yeah. And I can't cover. How do you go back to 23 issues ago? <laughs> how do you do that? I mean, the same way we went back in walking dead to, you know, a hundred well, issues. You're right. You're right. <laughs> 1949 hardcover from Dustin Weaver. Action, adventure, crime, mystery, science fiction. 120 pages for $19. Bloodrick's got a trade. It's uh, only encompassing the first three issues, and they're asking 15 bucks. Man, three issues, I'd like to see that be a 9.99 trade, but I've beaten that horse too much. Yeah, I don't think I, I think those are gone. Cobra Commander trade issues one through five, hundred twenty bucks. Joshua Williamson trade for Duke as well. Deluxe hardcover for Geiger, thirty five dollars for two hundred seventy two pages. That's a good deal. Geiger yeah. one through six portions of the eighty page giant and thirty pages of bonus material. I'm looking. I've been skimming one. You were doing yours, but all the way down to page 80 in the book, 78 digitally. Yep. Rock Candy Mountain Complete Trade Paperback. It's 232 pages. And it's only 20 bucks. Hey, and you loved that. 
I did love it. And yeah. eight eight comics shoved in there plus the bonus material, which I didn't get to read because I read it in singles. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, check that out. Kyle starts with Matt Kent cover. Yeah. A lot of collections in here. Dead Lucky, Friday, Invincible, Volume 4, Kaya, Trade Paper, Phantom so Road, weird, Trade Paper back. Weird, random, Invincible yeah. trade, isn't it? They're, they're trying to rebeat that drum because of the TV series. Oh, okay. Savage Dragon, Ain't No Grave, Two of Five, as we get back into the floppy comics. Scotty Young, so we'll see when this one finally comes out. It's actually an adventure fantasy book. Bear, Pirate, Viking, Queen by Sean Lewis. Still waiting for the first issue of that one. Blood Squad 7, number 2. The cabinet finishes. um, 5 of 5. And for some reason I thought this was a Scott Snyder book, but I think I'm getting that confused with something else. This is David Ebeltoff and Jordan Hart. Deviant six of a nine issue series by James Tinian. Really cool cover on that one. Drawing blood, very graffiti style on the covers here. Kevin Eastman with that cover A. That is an Eastman graffiti cover. Oh, okay, I see it. I do too. As soon as I saw that, I was like, it makes sense. Kevin Eastman story, Kevin Eastman art, Kevin Eastman cover. Feral number four. More animal horror in this ongoing series from the creators of Stray Dogs, Tony Fuchs. So, okay. So this launching it as an ongoing. Okay. Mm-hmm. The uh, cover B. Can you give me the reference? Back up a feral. Yeah. Uh, the Science of the Lambs. I believe it's 28 days later. Oh, 28 days later. Yeah, there's the biohazard. The Forge, number nine, from Greg Rucka. And G.I. Joe by Larry Hama, continuing on issue 307. That is a really, really good cover A. And it's also featuring Destro in the month in which we get Destro solo series. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, The second iteration of Geiger, Geiger number three, Action Adventure Dystopia. Jeff Johns. Grommets, which I thought was an, going to be an all-agey, but it's Rick Remender, so it's not. <laughs> Gunslinger Spawn 33, Holy Roller 7 of 9, 8 Fairyland 15, Infernals 5, end of its first story arc. Kaya 19, did not know that book was still going on. Yeah. End of the story arc for Philadelphia 36. King Spawn 35. Why are we not putting all the spawns just in a block? Why are we mixing them in here? It, it's kind of weird, right? Yeah. Did you read why. the first Last Mermaid? No. Okay. I wanted you to be my barometer on whether that's worth my time or not. I'd like Dystopia. Uh, uh, it's still it sitting there. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, you have to let me know. Back into the Lego Universe Ninja Ninjago Shatterspin 2. Local Man 11 from Tim Seeley and Tony Fleeks. Love Everlasting 15 by your boy Tom King. My boy. Monolith 2 with a Matina cover. Yeah, that's nice. Beautiful cover. And that's only a three-issue series, so that's going to be over before we know what's going on with it. Yeah. Monstrous 52. Beautiful cover. That's another one I want to go back and just read all. You are a monstrous maniac. Every monstrous I've read, I liked, and I just keep stopping yeah. for some odd reason. Doesn't make sense. Moon Man 5, the end of the first story arc, Kyle Higgins and Kid Cuddy book. Napalm Lullaby 4, Knights 8, The One Hand 5 by Ram V. That is the end of it. When does uh, Six Fingers start? Does it start after this finishes, or yes. is it going simultaneously? I think it starts after this finishes. Uh, okay. Rat City number three by Erica Schultz. Another Spanish book. Red Coat three. Rogue Sun twenty. 
Rook Exodus 3 by Jeff Johns, part of our Ghost Machine universe. Sacrificers 9 by Rick Remender. That's an interesting looking cover. Mm -hmm. Sam and Twitch case files, more Todd McFarlane. So I think they're not putting them in block because I think we'd realize we have, you know, eight different spawn books in this thing. (laughs) They're trying to trick us. Savage Dragon 271 as he takes advantage of the fact that Mickey Mouse is public domain. Now, is all of Mickey Mouse or just like Steamboat Willie? I think just Steamboat Willie because I think he drew him rudimentary enough that he gets away with it. Oh, okay. Scorched 31. Six Fingers 5. They are concurrent and I did not know what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't, I don't think I've read a six fingers. I have the one hand, but I don't think I've read a six finger. So I got to check and see where, where I missed it. Something Epic 11. Spawn 355. Um, is something Epic doing Dark Knight Returns? Yeah, that looks Dark Knight Returns on that one. And then what's the movie? Uh, I don't know on that one. I mean, I, that looks like the font from Beverly Hills Cop, but mm-hmm. that doesn't look like Beverly Hills Cop on the cover. So yeah, please just spell those homages out for us. <laughs> Second volume of Saint Mercy Godland Transformers number nine. With the whole world in his shoulder, and I love that cover B with shot with uh, shockwave creature or universal monsters creatures from the Black Lagoon lives three of four. Void rivals ten. Walking Dead Deluxe ninety. Walking Dead Deluxe ninety one. Getting there. Weatherman, six of seven. Whisper Queen, Queen, two of three by Chip Zdarsky. Jeez. What's a B cover? Mm hmm. Maria, I love it. I'm messing around. No, at all. World Tree 33 is on 11 and at the end of his second story arc. It's weird that it ends on 11. Yeah, so either they did a six and a five or a five and a six. And we are ending our book catalog with World Tree. That's it. Okay. Very interesting catalog. I mean, they are giving us preview pages on stuff. They are wanting to hook us. Yeah. Yeah, some good stuff. I'm uh, obviously I'm psyched about the um, Phillips and Brubaker new new thing. Sucked that I have to wait till August for it, yeah. but. Um, I guess get enough solicits in advance. That makes sense. As I get through it, I say, oh, still no saga. Hey, um, do you do uh, March Madness brackets by any chance? Uh, I usually do. I did not this year. So of the 63 games that played, I want to hazard a guess how many I got right. Uh, let's see. There were five upsets, so you probably got... 20. 15. There you go. <laughs> it's terrible. I have 15 out of 63. Oh, That's man. Funny. Yeah. Uh, I mean, busted bracket. I don't know why I even do it. I don't know why I even do it. It's, it's half the fun. Yeah. It's busting them brackets. All right, Drew. We've looked at what's in the future if we want to order things. Let's head on over to our good friends at Cover Price and look at their top 10 and see what's going on in the secondary market again and start where we've cycled things back just a little bit. Our number one book is Ultimate Black Panther number one, the regular Stefano Caselli cover. Lots Talk of about this one selling. Yeah. 54 copies selling a high sale of $91 for a CG site, C9.8, and near mint copies of floppies for 27 bucks as it continues to hold well. We're staying in the Ultimate Universe with number two with the Marco Cicchetto regular cover of Ultimate Spider-Man 2. We saw that one move 49 copies, uh, CGC 9.8 going for 70 bucks, and Near Mint going for 16 on the floppy end. Stay in the Ultimate Universe with the third book, Ultimate X-Men number one, Peach Momoko's regular cover, 
seeing that one selling 42 copies on the secondary market. A high sale of 20 bucks for raw copies, but you're getting them for 12 if you really check high and low. Yeah. So the first three books in the Ultimates universe, and the fourth, The Big Dog, New Mutants 98 from 1991. In case you haven't heard, and we really don't know how you haven't, Deadpool 3 is set to deba- debut in July of this year. About four months away from the only MCU movie to hit silver screens within this year. Not only is this Deadpool's first introduction to the MCU, but Deadpool is also being tasked with repairing the MCU. The trailer strongly hinted at Deadpool talking or taking to different timelines and universes for assignments tasked by the TVA. This movie has been rife with countless cameo rumors. The latest comes from a comment by James Marsden. We know him as Cyclops. In an interview for Sonic 3, he subtly commented that he filmed Sonic 3 next to the Deadpool 3 stages. The statement had fans led to believe that he made a cameo appearance. All it takes is a little spark, and the rumors go like wildfire. 38 copies of New Mutants 98 moved in the last seven days, a high sale of $1,380 for 69.8, and floppies are still $378. Wow. Eight Billion Genies, number one. We talked about this being option and Seth Rogen's attachment uh, to producing it. Um, They have also tapped Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, co-director Rodney Rothman, to adapt the storyline. 23 copies have moved in the last seven days with a high sale of $110 for CDC 9.8, and they're getting over $30 for floppies. Star Wars High Republic Phase 3, Issue Four standard cover. If you're a Star Wars fan and a key collector, this book is probably high on your list of wants. Star Wars comics are known for debuting a whole roster of new characters in a single issue. This book introduces not one, not two, but a staggering eight new characters. It's been a week since the release of the book, and it's seen a meteoric rise. The fair market value on this book has jumped over four times the cover price. It is a healthy aftermarket demand, and Star Wars fans have been known to keep a book hot for weeks after its debut. Let's see how this book fares in the next week's numbers. Tracking 19 copies in the secondary market, $18 for all, and currently you can get it for 12 if you're really looking. Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Though standard Still cover fun. A, not to be confused with Ultimate Spider-Man number two, which was higher on the list. Still selling 37 copies in the secondary market. CGC 9.8 is already up to $230, and floppies are going to run you over $80, Drew. The New Guardians number one from 1988. Reddit is a fascinating place to review, revisit faux paws of the past. Screen Rant originally covered the worst DC villain back in August of 2022, but thanks to Redditors, the Hemo Goblin is again in the spotlight. The post was about Hemo Goblin being the worst or most controversial villain. He's a white supremacist vampire whose powers allow him to bite enemies and give them AIDS. <laughs> This post was shared eight days ago, receiving over 13,000 reactions, and has a thriving comment section of over 500 replies. Pop Culture Brain has highlighted the villain in one of their videos, informing countless thousands more of this dastardly scoundrel. This attention led to a new all-time high sale for CGC 9.8 of $152. Wow, he's already popular. But we wonder if he can reach the upper echelons of DC's cocaine-powered villain infamy. 19 copies sold on the secondary market. A high sale of $23 for raw copy. Um, you can get them anywhere from like 5 to $6 up to 23 bucks. <laughs> so keep an eye out for the worst villain. A lot of hate buying here. Uh, Nova number one talked about this. Rumors began that Nova movie was in development by Marvel as the release date for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 approached. Many fans thought we would see a teaser for the character of the movie. Prior to release, James Gunn took to Twitter to reveal that this was not the case. Since the news of the Nova project hit hiatus just this past weekend, production and development executives at Marvel Studio Brad Winderbaum confirmed that the Nova project was in early development. So we saw 19 copies movie, DC 9.8, over $1,000 at 1104 and very fine floppies selling for $45. And at rank 10, we round out the Marvel Universe with Marvel Universe number one. And this is, of course, Maystorm and a few other things. The new Black Panther, Ultimate Spider-Man thing. In this book, 22 copies. 
forty dollars was the high for raw settling for fair market value of twenty nine bucks. Very cool. Boom, Kyle. Uh, the runners up were lead off with New Teen Titans number one from nineteen eighty. This is um all your favorites. And but not no, not yeah, Nightwing no, wasn't in there books. yet. No, no, no. He's still right. Robin in that. Yeah. And a high sale of two ninety for a CGC nine eight. We sold seventeen copies of this book. Raw is around eighty four bucks. I think I have two copies of this one. Do you? Dump them. Uh, at rank twelve, we have yeah. I Heart Skull Crusher from twenty twenty four. Boom. We moved seventeen copies of this with a high sale of twenty three dollars for a raw. At rank thirteen, we hit Spider Man number one. From 2012, the original Spider Men. I'm sorry, Spider Men from 2012, the original team up. We both liked this back in the day. It's like when we first started podcasting, I think. Uh, yeah, I 11 think we copies were sold. Fans. What? What'd you say? If I remember correctly, we were indeed fans of this book. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to think. Yeah, I think I think we were. Yeah. Um, the fan base is all up in their fields. Tracked 11 copies sold. High sale of 102 for CGC 98. Raws around 22 bucks. I rank 14. Uh, Wolverine 36. Uh, we sold 22 copies of this online. High sale of $235 for CGC 98. Raw's around 54. I rank 15. We have Edge of Spider Verse number one, the surprise. Um, this has Weapon 8 uh, in it, and we don't know if, how, if stores got one, two, or three copies. That's right. But it was just kind of um, sent out, probably based on their sales. I would guess 24 or how copies. Much they liked them. Or yeah, or just random. Uh, <laughs> 24 copies sold. High sale of 40 bucks for a raw. Which ain't too shabby for a free book. <laughs> no doubt. At rank 16, we have Avengers Twilight number one, which is a book I regret missing, so I FOMO'd on this one myself. <laughs> uh, 12 copies of this sold with a high sale of $20 so far for a Raw. At rank 17, we have Secret Wars number eight. That's the black suit, Spidey, of course. 25 co- more copies of this move with a high sale of $510 for a 9.8. Raw's around 210 bucks. At rank 18, we have Alien War Worlds number four from Pacific Comics in 1983. 1983, dang. Yeah, so we're going back to the well here. Um... It has allowed, this is some, what is the deal here? We're looking, Dave Stevens, is that the deal? The, they're just looking for a Dave Stevens comic? I guess, yeah. Featured a ton. Trading Dave Stevens gems lately in the market. Yeah, so looking for Dave Stevens books. Uh, 17 copies of this one sold. High sale of 151 for a CGC 9.6 and a current raw around 40 bucks. You just never know what's going to get. <laughs> That's why you uh, hold on to every book, Drew, and you never yeah, sell anything. Never, never let them go. Never let them go. You're gonna feel bad if you do. <laughs> you hold on makes... to all your secret words. You never know when they're gonna all hit. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? How many sets do we sell? So many. So many. Um, <laughs> the, uh, rank 19, we have X Men 27, the Peach Momoko New Champions. Uh, sold 13 copies. High sale of 162 for CGC 98. Raw's around 52 bucks. And rounding out the top 20, we have The Immortal Iron Fist, number two, from 2006. Uh, we were just talking about this. Iron Fist on Netflix had its fans. Mm-hmm. But it was the least favorite of their five series. How dare However, they? I liked it better than... Uh, don't you say Jessica Jones. I did like it better than Jessica Jones. I'll punch Jones you right in the face. The, other one, the guy she was with. Yeah, Cage, Luke Cage. Yeah, Luke Cage. Sorry. Liked it better than both those, huh? Yep. Okay. Fans immediately thought of this book featuring the first appearance of Wu O Shi, a female Iron Fist from past generations. Online theories are going crazy, taking one of the best parts from Iron Fist, Colleen Wing, and bestowing the Iron Fist title upon her for the reboot. 
bringing about a depiction of Wu O Shi as featured in the book. So 11 copies of this sold with a high sale $13 for Raw because fans thought this might happen, but they have no proof. Okay. <laughs> Speculation. No proof. No but proof. You never, you never know. Well, that's that's what spe- specking ain't easy, man. <laughs> but it's always fun. That's that. Very cool. Sorry, my family is in the background, uh, apparently having a party, so sorry. <laughs> All right, let's head on over to our good friends at Lunar Distributions and look for their 26th releasing books. We're looking for 326. 326, 2024, and we're starting with weird books, like the hardcover for Absolute Luther and Joker. <laughs> <laughs> in weird Alan Scott Green Lantern books. Wow. Amazon's oh. attack. Still not there. Third printing of Batman 142. That's impressive. Wow. Second printing of Batman 143. Second printing of Batman 144. So man, people are enjoying this Sadarsky run. Yeah, so well, the, the Joker, Joker, Joker yeah. Year One. So all the Joker Year One stuff. Yeah, going pretty hardcore. I mean, every time I'm thinking, man, isn't this joke Joker played out? Can we give yeah. him a break? Then look what happens. People dig yeah. it so much. Batman Dark Age. That's Mike Allred on the cover there. Who's writing it? That's Mark Russell and mm-hmm. Mike Allred. Hmm. I don't miss this. I must not have missed it at the time, but I've forgotten about it. <laughs> forgotten My about brain it. has forgotten about it. It looks, yeah, I'm, I'm all over that. Creepy covers from Cemetery Kids Don't Die. Green Arrow 10. Very cool Jorge Fornes cover. Very reminiscent of David Aha. It is, yes. Here, boy. Cool Sweetie Boo cover of Harley Quinn. Over the Suzumaki. I was just about to say, but not as good as the Sozo Miyake. <laughs> I was going to say. I'm going to put a pin in that one for now. <laughs> and then uh, Sozo Miyake doing well with the uh, Power Girl 7 as well. Oh, wow. She's rocking these Women's History Month covers. Yeah. Uh, or he. Do I know? No, do we know? Oh, yeah. Okay. She's an Instagram friend. Primer number one. Let's jump over to the 27th see what's releasing on Wednesday from our editor and stuff. Third printing of Duke number one, second printing of Duke number two, and then give us Duke four. Yeah, Feral number one. We have the ash can. Now we have the actual Tony series premiere. Horror from the creator of Street. Monsters hits 50. 50 Kyle's yeah, favorite. I'll say I might have to pick that up just for sake. I, I, I love the cover D, the Son of Takeda. Actually, Morning they're all Son of Takeda. Morning Star with uh, Marco Finnegan and Jason Wordy from... What is that book? I can't tell. I don't know who the publisher is. Look out, 1956. The Nasty Hits, number eight. Newburn's back with the series finale. I know I've been saying it's the series finale for the last three (laughs) issues, but this is actually the series finale. Should be good. Sex Criminals Complete Edition. Issues one through 30 and the one shot special edition. $49.99. Second print of Six Fingers, number one, alongside second issue of Six Fingers. Okay. So Six Fingers just... Under York, number one. Void Rivals, number one, going to a seventh print, Drew. Holy crap. That's amazing. And it looks like a new cover. Yeah. Under York looks pretty good. Send it over to Boom Studios and our good friends at Previews World and see what they have. Power Rangers this, Power Rangers that, Rangers that. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's what Boom has to offer this week. Yeah, it's pretty much what they're leading into. You know, old Garfield. We get Amazing 46. Always a favorite. Edge of Spider Verse 2. Kari Andrews cover. Jackpot and Black Cat number one. I'm looking forward to that one. I enjoyed the last miniseries they did, so I'll be on that one again. I like the Saturday morning variant too on that one. That's kind of cool. I'm sitting out the Spider Punk, sitting out this version of Superior Spider Man, but not Ultimate. No, Ultimate, Ultimate 3, that's their easy pick. And they got a couple of fun covers with homages on them. The Mike Del Monday, though, with the we'll do it laundry day, but it looks like he's throwing the 
costume in the trash. That's a good one. Well, that might be an easy pick. Let's see what Dynamite says. Mm, not much. One old Thundercats for fifty dollars. <laughs> right? That's. I thought that was kind of weird. Some random stuff. Interesting anime. Cheaper sucks. Yeah. Your cross plus one hundred. Weird covers are coming back in. I I just don't get how they have so many. <laughs> Unless they had like, do they have a return policy? Did everybody send them back, or did he just overprint them? This is so weird. Hmm. These alien books. Are alien books, the new Valiant. Is that the deal? I think so. Well, they bought, they absorbed the Valiant stuff, but are also doing their own thing. La Muerta Devious from Coffin Comics. They've slabbed it, graded it an 11, and put it on a cover. So this is the first issue of Feral, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mad Cave Studios is who's doing Morningstar. Man, I could not read their little publisher. Mod Pledge. Yeah. I, it wasn't, it didn't stand out to me either. Provident, that's not $30. Hmm. A lot of books, but not that. Six Fingers, that's, I think we said that went to a second Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. I'm not finding anything else. I can't live without. Yeah, I think you're right. There's a couple I remember I was between, but I can't remember what my first one. All this. All right, Drew. This is the point of the podcast where I ask for your picking this week. What is the one book you got to make sure you go to your bookshop and have because it's going to be the one that everybody's hitting on the secondary market to overtake all of our good friends. On the um, I like it. The easy pick is any of the ultimate threes. Mm-hmm. Um, especially the one with the discarded costume. I think that's top notch. But I think I want to throw a little love to Newburn for the last time. The f- series finale. So Newburn 16. Um, people do collect last issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's possible that it will be lower print run and sought after eventually. Chip, uh, Chip Zdarsky, Fabian Alele and Jacob Phillips on the art. So uh, let's go with Newburn 16. All right. So I'm kicking back the two Sozo Miyakias. We have the Harley Quinn and the Power Girl. They're both awesome. And of course, Feral number one. Very good. Both there. I was also looking at that Mad Cave Morning Star, Jack Pot and Black uh, or Black Cat. But I think I'm going to go with the Harley Quinn 38 Sozo Miyakia cover C. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, it's phenomenal. <laughs> Pretty darn good, yeah. But you can't go wrong with Power Girl one either. Uh, I love these shows. Uh, all right, well, thank you for hanging along with Drew and myself as we go through your books coming up here at the very end of March as we head into April. If you want more from Drew and myself, head on over to Patreon.com, search Comics for Fun and Profit. Get in on all the fun-filled action. Hopefully I'll finish X-Men 97 and we can talk about it here soon. We appreciate it for Drew and for myself. See you. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the c4 fap links you could ever need all in one place you can provide feedback listen support share enjoy these we have our patreon there you can buy us a beer or a coffee you can check out our instagrams our twitters our facebooks check out our youtube page you can email us you can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 fap links you could ever need. Thanks. Back to the show. <laughs>